about over the last several weeks how we can live the life that God blesses. And if you're going to find out how to do that, go to the Beatitudes. It's all found right there. So notice with me, Matthew chapter 5, and let's go ahead and begin with verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And now please notice with me, verse 10, 10 through 12, our text for this morning. Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. For my name, for my sake, and then notice verse 12, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. Father, this morning we thank you. We thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, and Lord, we're thankful that we have a more sure word. We have the word of God. We have complete confidence in what you say to us. And as we've looked at these Beatitudes, as we've looked at how, in fact, you clearly want to bless, let us take hold, let us grab a hold of in a very, very important way how we can enjoy these blessings. Even as we read these scriptures, Lord, we we might even think, how can you be blessed as one who is persecuted? So, Lord, we ask the question this morning, and with high expectation, we look forward to your answer. Lord, hide this preacher behind the cross, behind you, Lord. Let people hear and, and know that it, you are speaking. And, Lord, let, let all of us now just focus on what you have for us. Lord, for some of us, we're familiar with these passages, and therefore we might think that everything that could be preached has been preached, and even if that, in fact, were the case, we still need to hear it. And so prepare our hearts to hear, Lord. But also, Lord, if there's one here this morning who cannot say, I don't know about being blessed because I don't even know the Savior. I don't know the one that you're talking about. I don't know who this Jesus is. Friend, do you need to say it today? Do you need to ask Jesus into your heart? And the Holy Spirit of God, even as you prick our hearts to see in a very big way what it means to be blessed, speak to those, uh, even one, if there's one who just doesn't know you, Lord, just pray that they get saved with you today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, it's got to be the Word of God, because if, if man made this up, if I were to just kind of think, hey, this would be great, how about this statement, blessed are the persecuted. What? You're going to start talking to me about persecution, and you're going to somehow say that, that those who are persecuted will be blessed, can be blessed, are walking in a blessing? You know, there's a new brand of Christianity in America today that's foreign to the New Testament. Churches today are marketing themselves as a place where you can attend and not have to worry about convictions or taking up the cross. I guess in a way, the times haven't really changed. In fact, in the first century, when Jesus preached that men should take up a cross and follow him, they forsook him and crucified him. That was their answer to it, that preacher's message. They forsook him and crucified him. People have no problem following a religious leader who downplays convictions, but they will crucify a man who points the way to the narrow gate. Wow. Gets real quiet in here. Can I just say something? From this pulpit, we will always preach the word of God. Amen. We're not Amen. looking Amen. to tickle ears. We're not. I don't know. I, I always get a strange 
visual when I say tickle ears. <laughs> I got his ears to tickle, amen? We're not here to try to just throw out a few warm and fuzzies so that you can go home and say you've been to church. We'll preach the word of God around here. Amen. And you say, well, you know, that doesn't uh, produce the kind of response that, you know, in today's world with the demographics that we are considering today, that will really work. It didn't work too well in Jesus' day, but for a few. And that's the truth. Their response, the majority, as far as the majority was concerned, crucify him. Crucify him. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's what the Bible says. That's what the word of God says. And someone's already thinking, well, preacher, if in fact that's the case, I'm just going to be getting, I better get ready for all the blessings because I've, I've seen all the persecution. Well, there are different types of persecution. Persecution that you bring onto yourself for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And those times when you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're walking with the Lord, you're honoring the Lord. And yes, those are going to be the times when you can say, President George W. Bush would say, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. Because I'm in the Lord's hands and I'm trusting him. And if I'm doing what he wants me to do, there's nothing in this world that can that can top what my Savior can do. Beginning with a man named Cain, <coughs> moving down this day, committed Christians will be harassed. Faithful followers will get grief. They will be reviled. They will suffer persecution. How many would say, preacher, I already know what you're talking about. Talk about evil spoken of. I already know what that's about, my friend. That's the word of God. That's what the Bible says. So where am I going with this? How do you take all of this and now appreciate the fact that the, the Beatitudes say that you will be blessed? I mean, come on, go all the way through the Beatitudes and you're thinking, Wait a minute, this wasn't what I was hoping to hear. This is not warm and fuzzy. Going back, blessed are the poor. Oh my, you gotta be poor? Well, most of us fly there, amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit is what we're talking about. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are the meek. Oh, the meek? Are you talking about the weak? Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Okay, that's starting to make some sense. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. You know, I got to tell you, if I wrote the word of God or you wrote the word of God, it wouldn't be the word of God, by the way. Because the only way it can be the word of God is that God wrote it. If any of us had anything to do with it, we will probably make a different list. And that's why when you come down to this passage that says, blessed are ye. When men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice. It doesn't say grin and bear it. It doesn't say just struggle through it. It doesn't say anything like that. The scripture says, verse 12, rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. My friends, rejoice is what the Bible says. And so let's just talk about the reality, first of all, of persecution. We don't have to spend a whole lot of time here, but I think it's worth mentioning, especially in the day and age in which we live. You don't hear too much about persecution around the world. The reality of persecution. If you endeavor to allow these Beatitudes to be your attitudes, if you intend to be a bold witness, expect, expect great persecution. You see, we're not talking about something like being rude. We're not talking about something that you would provoke with a wrong spirit. Some Christians got this attitude. I run around and I make people mad and therefore they get mad at me and that's my persecution. Well, you know what? You ought to just get popped in the head and chew on you. <laughs> you know? If you offend, that's wrong. If the word of God offends, so be it. Amen. That's the way it works. Persecution. Persecution for 
righteousness' sake. Turn to your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. Notice with me verse 13. And I'll tell you, God, he, he just doesn't do any mental offense preaching, does he? I mean, here again we see this word. Are you ready? 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning with verse 13. But rejoice. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when the glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a, are you ready for this? It's in the list. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Let him glorify God on this behalf. My friend, if you're causing the persecution, stop. You're wrong. If any of these apply, that's not the kind of persecution that God blesses. And I still am amazed that when I look at a list that says murderer, thief, evildoer, and in that same list you find the word busybody, I think everybody can probably say, oh my, or oh me. Amen? And the scripture is quite clear. If you are following the Lord, if you're focusing on your relationship with the Lord, if you're desiring to take a stand for him, a real stand for him with a right heart in the right spirit you will suffer persecution you will suffer persecution can i just say something there are going to be people who will laugh at you at work are you ready for that there will be people who will make fun of you at school yeah. when you say look I, i'm not doing that i'm not going to get into that you've got to be a bigger man you've got to be bolder as a man or woman of god in the world to say no to the world than to say yes to, to Christ here at church when we're walking around here and we're all giving each other high fives and calling each other brother and sister. Uh, and that's pretty wonderful to do, but can we stand for the Lord out there in the world? And can, we, can we take a stand for the Lord around maybe watered down Christians? Can we, can we stand for the Lord? Can we take a stand and stand with the Lord when someone who even considers, who says that they're saved is challenging us to dial it back? Don't take this whole business of following the Lord so seriously. You get excited about souls being saved and, you, and, you'll, and you're preaching. You know, can't you just act like the rest of the world? <laughs> no. And that's exactly why the real answer to, to this question, how through persecution can I be blessed? The answer is this. But you're going to stick around for the rest of the message because I don't want to end yet. Ready? The answer <laughs> is this. You want to please your God. Amen. At the end of the day, you want to be able to say, God, I did not turn my back on you. I did not look the other way. I did not fall into the same sin that Peter fell into. I stood. And yes, blessed are the persecuted. This past several months, we have seen Christians persecuted. You may have to dig deep to find out how many Christians are being persecuted. But we have Christians that are leaving Egypt right now by the tens of thousands. 